had a, had a tough non-conference, but we also had a really good schedule and um, like to talk about having, you know, real problems. I think a lot of times you can work through your non-conference and you don't get to real problems. And if you have a, a tough schedule, you can, you know, also lose some games in there and it's kind of tough sledding at that, at those points. But I think we learned a lot about our team. We grew, able to have a fabulous conference season and be co-champs along with uh, Michigan State and then uh, make a good run in the NCAA tournament. So I um, was really proud of our guys last year, and um, hopefully we learned something from that. And uh, we lost a lot with our three guys and Carson Edwards, Ryan Klein, and Grady Eifert, um, who was the most efficient player in college basketball last year. And it kind of shows if you get guys that play hard and do what they're supposed to do, they're going to help you win games. And uh, sometimes that gets lost. And uh, we just have to have <clears> – <throat> Guys learn from that experience, and we need some new guys to come in and be able to adapt to our system and, and our understanding of how to play. And um, But I'm really excited about it. I think we have some good interior players in Travion Williams and Matt Harms. No Joe Eastern has a lot of experience, um, a guy who's really helped us win games. And then we have a, a lot of guys that can make shots. And so just trying to get that balance and that growth from our guys that uh, – <clears throat> especially the guys that came off the bench. We had four freshmen come off the bench for us last year that will now be sophomores. So it's going to be a big um, jump for those guys, but looking forward to uh, working with everybody and having a great season. Thank you, Coach. We will open <coughs> the floor for questions on your left here. Hey, good morning, Matt. Jeff Rab Johns. Um, good morning. You've been in this league as long as about anybody who's currently coaching. The new three-point distance, how do you think that's going to impact play in the Big right. Ten this year, the first right. year. Today. Well, I think it'll be different for each team. <clears throat> um, I think the guys that can make threes, it's probably not going to bother much. And the guys that are trying to be three-point shooters, it's really going to bother. You know, there's always guys. We have a couple guys that are working towards, you know, trying to make threes now that made it really hard for them. Um, but the guys that already shoot threes that <clears throat> walk on campus, and that's the reason they're there, um, you know, we really look into their skill level when we take them. We've taken guys. You know, Ryan Klein was, you know, one of those guys that we had no high major offers and ended up being a really good high major player. Um, but it was because he could shoot threes. Uh, the line doesn't affect him. The line doesn't affect Carson Edwards. Um, but it will affect guys trying to do that. So I think as the season progresses and you look at guys' percentages, I think you can end up seeing them for certain teams, people really packing it in and making you earn it, you know, from the three-point line. Because the three-point line has changed – you know, how we guard things. You know, we, you know, you're trying to get threes, but you're also trying to stop your opponent from getting threes. So I think it's one of those wait and see things, but it's going to be interesting. I think it'll fluctuate um, from team to team. On your left here. Okay. okay. Coach Tom Brew, SportsIllustrated.com. With all that Carson showed last year in regards to just taking over games and finishing that, how much of a carryover can there be in your guys who are back this year just seeing that and being right. part of it and wanting to step up and do the same thing themselves? Well, I think we have to be different when it comes to scoring the basketball. I think we had a really good balance two years ago. Um, and then last year, obviously, um, you know, he, he had a lot of uh, responsibility in terms of shooting the basketball. But the people around Carson Edwards had a, had a great collective assist turnover ratio they took care of the basketball. They made good decisions. Um, I thought Matt Harms is one of the best defensive players in our league. I thought Nogel Eastern was one of the best defensive players in our league. I just mentioned Grady Eifert was the most efficient player in the country. Um, so you, then you throw someone like Ryan Klein on top of it, who had the best assist turnover ratio in the history of Purdue basketball. That, that, that was a good mix. That was a good um, stew that we had you know, you know, with our starting five. Then Travion Williams and those guys that came off the bench, you know, really gave us a punch. So <clears throat> I think trying not to be like that team is going to be really important. Like no one's going to take over Carson Edwards' role for us. You know, we didn't have a Carson Edwards before, and let's not have one afterwards. And I think that's important in basketball because I think in recruiting, a lot of times people say, hey, you're going to come in and you're going to play the same role as this guy, when in reality, you're just going to be the best, you know, version of yourself. Each team's different, even if you have a lot of experience. I think that's important for us to kind of learn. We played a lot different than we did the previous year, and I, and I look at us doing a lot of the same things, but in a different way. Right in the back. Okay. Paul M. Banks, thesportsbank.net. December 4th, you got the rematch against Virginia and the Big Ten ACC Challenge. Looking back on your, on your career, your tenure at Purdue, 
Has there been a pre-conference game, a non-conference regular season game that has been maybe as much of a circle the date kind of affair as this right. one? Well, we have a very difficult schedule, but you know, to be able to play, um, you know, a program like Virginia, who won the national championship in the next year after we had a, a tough loss to them um, to go to the Final Four, um, you know, it, it is a big is a big challenge. But it's also, you know, we play Texas at home and we play at Marquette. Um, we play VCU and Destin, and then we either play Florida State or Tennessee and Destin before we play them. So we have so many challenges before them. But no, Tony Bennett's a is a great coach, and um, it'll be very difficult for us. Um, they lost a lot, we lost a lot, um, but it's when, whenever you play them, it's it's very difficult um, to go against, and they're very stingy on defense, um, very efficient on the offensive end. Um, but it's going to be a big challenge for us. Good morning, Coach. Uh, William Boyer, BasketballSocietyOnline.com. As we creep closer and closer to uh, 2020, if you had to name the best player that you've seen in the Big Ten this decade, who would you say it is? In the decade? This decade, from 2010 until 2020, who would you say? Man, you should give me some candidates because I'm going to forget people. Um, <laughs> obviously, I'm going to be biased. I mean, we've been able to win um, some Big Ten championships. We've been close a couple other times. Um, from a second semi. Carson Edwards was a really good player, um, you know, for us. And in the beginning of the decade, obviously, Etwan Moore, Juwan Johnson, and Robbie Hummel um, were really good. And Caleb Swanigan in two years, you know, he was the Big Ten Player of the Year. Um, Juwan Johnson was the Big Ten Player of the Year. Um, so I'd probably give one of those two guys the nod just because they got that award. And, you know, we won the league with those guys. Juwan's year, I don't think we won the league then, but we won it previously. Um, so, you know, one of those guys, but there's obviously a lot of good players. That's kind of a loaded question. Yeah, Kevin Brockway, CNHI Sports in the Air. Coach, how has uh, Jihad Proctor uh, kind right. of adapted yeah. uh, during summer workouts, and how do you envision his role during the course well, season? Well, Jihad's been um, really good. You know, he's a guy that can score the basketball. He has a lot of experience, um, you know, really trying to really separate himself. We have some, some guys that are very similar you know, in those positions, we have a, uh, a freshman, we have a redshirt sophomore. So those guys have done a really good job, you know, of competing. Just trying to learn our system. We run a lot of stuff. And so just trying to get everything down. Um, when, they, when they're thinking too much, you know, now they're not going full tilt. And then they got to get to where they know what they're doing so they can compete and play hard. Uh, but no, Jihad's, a, you know, we, we thought when we lost Carson, we needed somebody with a little bit more experience um, in that mix. Uh, but but he, he can really put the ball in the basket. Um, he averaged 19 points last year for high point, played for one of the best coaches in the country in Tubby Smith. Um, so when he messes up on defense, I'm always on him that, that he should know better because the guy he played for at high point, you know, was such a good coach. Um, but we're excited to have him. It, it's hard. It's, it's really everybody sees the fifth-year guys, and they, they come into a new program. They, they're learning part of what they have to do is the same as a freshman. Even though they have some experience, they have no experience of being in your program. So if they can get through that hurdle and be productive right away and build off of it, um, it really helps them. But if they don't, um, you know, they kind of get into some struggles that freshmen do. Last question in the back there. This is James Boyd, uh, Times Zone for Indiana. I want to know about uh, freshman Brandon Newman. What does he bring and just yeah. with his athleticism? And also, what do you expect from Sasha in his third year with the program? Yeah. Well, those are, the, those are the guys that are in that same uh, fray that I, I just mentioned with Jihad Proctor, Sasha Stefanovic, and Brandon Newman. But Brandon is very competitive, plays hard, um, can make threes, um, just got a lot thrown at him right now as, as a true freshman. Just so, you know, learning the system, um, competes, and uh, lays it on the line. But just, just looking for him to, to keep improving every single day and, and give us that punch in the, in the backcourt. Sprained his ankle the other day. So he's going, to, he's going to be out here for a couple days, but look for him to be back hopefully, um, you know, either tomorrow or Friday. Um, Sasha Stefanovic has uh, been really good for us. He kind of got the short end of the stick last year just because he was behind Ryan Klein and Carson Edwards. Um, he'd go in and play well, but he wouldn't play more, which is frustrating if you're a player, just because those other two guys are there. But <clears throat> I look for him to, to really help us. You know, he, out of those three guys, he knows what we're doing. Um, the most. He has the most experience. He can move and shoot. A lot of times guys get credit for making a play and shooting and then being able to stand still and, and shoot the basketball. But if you can sprint off things and catch the basketball and shoot, you know, you're a weapon. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to him, you know, bringing that experience and that understanding and being able to shoot 
you know, beyond the ark. 